Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> Today we'll be, do, we'll be discussing the derivation of the Schrodinger's equation. And um, um, today <clears throat> we'll start by deriving um, the Schrodinger um, time independent equation. Now, we recall that a Hamiltonian operator is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy plus the sum of the potential energy. Now we know that the kinetic energy for a macro object such as a ball, for instance, when we kick a ball, um, or yeah, when we kick a ball, now it attain a certain velocity that means the, the 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 energy it has by virtue of its motion is known as the kinetic energy and why the potential energy as the case may be is the energy in which a body has by by virtue of its height or its position so potential energy as the case may be is a, is is this the energy is a function of position. Why kinetic energy is function of velocity. That's the reason why I defined the potential energy as a function of position. That means it depends on position. Why this kinetic energy, as the case may be, can be defined as one over two m v squared. Now we know that from classical mechanics that momentum is equal to mv. <clears throat> Therefore, we can rewrite the kinetic energy as equal to mv squared over 2m is the same thing as this actually because when you say um mv times mv we have m square v squared and when we divide by m we still go back to the same thing as one over two mv squared and then um, we know that um mv is the same thing as the potential energy therefore we can write the kinetic energy of a macro object to be equal to what p square over two M. Now, if that's true, then we can rewrite our um, equation 1 as the Hamiltonian operator to be equal to P squared over 2M plus Vx. Then we can call this equation 2. But you will agree with me that there is no difference between this equation and this equation. It's just that I rewrite the equation with respect to the momentum of the body, the macro body. So now when we are dealing with a microscopic object, such as an electron, as the case may be, we know that the electron behave in a different way from a ball or from a macro object. So therefore... Um, and according to um, to the dual nature of matter, which states that um, matter behaves as particle or as a wave. So now the best description of um, such equation is that the momentum of such particle is defined with respect to the reduced Planck's k. Where k, k this is the reduced Planck's why k is the wave number. Now we can rewrite equation to us. Hamiltonian to be equal to h reduced Planck's the wave number over 2m plus the potential energy. Sorry, yeah. Squared. So now Therefore, we can now simplify it as the Hamiltonian 
reduce plank squared the wave number squared over 2 m plus the potential energy which you can call equation one two three so now this equation as the case may be describes the wave property of an electron or its micro object therefore we now know that the wave function is dependent on position and time is giving us a naught exponential kx minus wt now when we multiply equation 3 by the wave function we have the Hamiltonian operator the wave function and then the reduced Planck squared k squared and in brackets the wave function see close bracket over 2 m plus the potential energy then the wave function close the bracket so now if that's the case now we know that um the wave function is giving us x c equal to a naught e k x minus w t now when we differentiate um the wave function with respect to x that means when we differentiate it with respect to k twice we have the take the partial derivative of um the wave function with respect to x we have um k a naught e k x minus w now when we take the second derivative respect to x we now have square k square e naught e minus i k x w c therefore we now know that this is the same thing as minus one therefore we can rewrite as um, negative k square e square e kx minus wt now we know that um, we know that the wave function is the same as a not e Sorry, here we have imaginary here. So imaginary kx. Therefore, um, can I rewrite this as x? Right. Over squared equal to negative k squared x prime. Now we recall from um, <coughs> um, this equation that states that um, um, when we take
when we take the product of the wave function of both sides, we have um, the radius Planck squared k square the wave function over 2m plus the potential energy t. So in place of k square y, we can now write the whole of this. So we can have the home atomia beta the radius planks over 2 m then we'll have negative the wave function over 2 x squared plus v x this right so we can arrange this as this plutonium squared over 2m plus vx the wave function x c now this is known as um the schrodinger equation um schrodinger um time independent equation which can be rewrite for a three-dimensional three dimension as m plus the wave function which can be written as X here. So this is um, the Schrodinger time independent equation for a three dimension. Thank you and please um, like and subscribe to my channel.